Muckinboodin is a northeastern wheat belt town, almost 300 kilometres from Perth. Being fairly small and remote, it doesn't have a very large population. But people who live in these small country towns tend to be very loyal and love the places to bits. A local resident, Grace Conroy, wrote the following about the town. A tribute to Muckinboodin. You may talk of New York City, you may sing of gay Paris, you may say that dear old London is the best. But the name which sets me thinking when the sun is slowly sinking is good old Muck and Budin in the West. It hasn't got the beaches of a Manly or a Bondi, nor the sound of breaking surf on tropic shore. But there's something very homely that just gets you when you're lonely. The name of Muck and Budin, nothing more. The 1981 census showed clearly what the primary industry is in the area, with only 931 people, but 147,000 sheep. Wheat is another of the area's main income earners. Muckinboodin is the last major town in the northeastern wheat belt. Bonnie Rock is the only centre further out, but it's not really a town these days. The town is neat and tidy, with a good rest area, clean modern public toilets, an RV rest area, a caravan park, BP garage and other facilities such as a supermarket. The local caravan park is excellent and boasts one of the best camp kitchens you will find anywhere. Right next door to it is the local swimming pool. This is a very popular spot in the hot months of the year. If you need to stock up on supplies then there's an IGA store and a good hardware supplier in town. The first European explorer through the area was that man John Septimus Rowe. He led an expedition in 1836. It reached a point overlooking the current Shire, but got no further due to lack of provisions. It was usual for explorers to set off in the cooler months of the year, May to August, to ensure adequate supplies of fodder and water. But Rowe had decided on this occasion to head off in October, and continued on into November. Next came Augustus and Francis Gregory in 1846. They'd both been trained by Rowe. They described the area as 70 miles of barren waste. The expedition was followed in 1854 by Robert Austin, who was similarly unimpressed by what he saw. In 1864, Clarkson, Harper and Lukin arrived but they reported their journey as being unsuccessful. Despite the gloomy reports about the area, the first pastoral leases were taken up in 1867. Clarkson and Lukin were to take up leases and expand them over time, even though their original reports had been less than enthusiastic. Settlement increased in the 1870s, with a series of huge sheep runs averaging 20,000 acres each. By 1910, wheat was also being grown in the district. Settlers in the area proposed the name Barbain, but they changed their minds and wanted muck in booding. This was shortened to the current form and was gazetted in 1922. The name muck in booding rock was first recorded in 1889, but the meaning is not known. Another rock feature called Berin booding had a large water catchment tank bored into it in 1937. It was built by workers on a susso, or sustenance support, during the Great Depression. The tank holds 2.25 million gallons of water and is the largest rock catchment tank in Australia. It cost £10,000 to construct. Another rock of note in the area is Elatch Butting. It has a standing wave formation similar to that found in Haydn at Wave Rock. Elatch Butting Rock is also a popular campsite. Lake Brown and Bonnie Rock were also gazetted town sites within the Shire, but a combination of factors, including the Great Depression, eventually led to them being abandoned in favour of Muckinboodin. In most WA country towns, local vehicles bear a number plate 
that identifies it as local. For example, HC1002 would be from Halls Creek. When, in 1933, the road board decided to use the letters MUK, there was a huge outcry from many local residents. Some even registered their vehicles in nearby shires in protest. A letter of complaint in the newspaper read, The members all ought to have their heads read. If they do not alter it from MUK, my tart says, they must be a funny lot of blokes. Odd, perhaps, that MUK seemed so offensive to this writer, but could happily refer to his girlfriend as my tart. The complaints continued, but the road board resisted change for two years. But the weight of public indignation was too much, and eventually the MUK plates vanished, to be replaced with MBL. Although where exactly the L comes from, we don't know. <laughs>